Hey! For the past two years, I've spent a lot of time playing Battlefield 2042. It's been kind of my go-to game to waste time. About a year ago, they put in the thermal optics update, and that made it a lot of fun to just snipe with a thermal scope and troll people. But I kept thinking, if this is the future, because it's the year 2042, if it's the future, why are these optics so dumb? They don't do anything else besides show you a thermal image at, you know, at a high frame rate or whatever. I thought they could be smarter, so I thought, well, I should build one. And I failed at it because it's really tough to get a thermal image bolometer that can actually do a high frame rate that isn't ITAR restricted, that does more than, you know, eight frames per second with the FLIR leptin line. Um, but I ended up building a smart scope with a lot more features than I thought I could pack into it. Uh, so I want to show it to you now and hope to uh, see if you're interested in building one yourself. I'm new to the gun community, but I know all you guys really want to do is show off whatever fucking gun you just dump all your money into building up. So that's what I'm going to do. I learned how to shoot uh, just starting last year on this Savage Axis 2 on a Boyd's gun stock with a Vortex optics. Fucking hell, I don't fucking know. I learned how to shoot and I'm having a good time with it. But I really want to take my wife out shooting with, with me, kind of like this YouTube couple shooting really cool long range and hitting the shots and uh, trading places between spotter and shooter. It looks like fun, but I wanted to get her into it, but I didn't have time to explain all the math to her, all of the uh, ordinary differential equations you gotta run through, the, the, the whole concept of Mach number, how it changes during your flight and how uh, and the environmental error around it affects the Mach number, altitude is so effective on it. All this, all this math shit, I didn't wanna have to explain it to her. So I thought, well, there must be a spotting scope that makes it easy, but it doesn't seem to, that there is one out there. Uh, you, this is a $60 piece of shit from Amazon, but you know, you can see the target really well, 60 times zoom, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't give you any scope on, oh, how far is it? I don't know. You can go ahead and buy yourself one of those $600 Kestrel handhelds that'll tell you some of your shot, um, some of your shot data after you measure the wind. Or you can follow my footsteps and build your own smart spotting scope that does all the ballistics calculations behind the scene, real time, it's editable. Um, sure, there's not a wind meter built into it, but you can buy one separate for less than $20 on Amazon and just punch in that data. If you think about a rifle scope, it's, it's an optical assembly that's marking out, either in the first focal plane or second focal plane, whatever, uh, it's marking out degrees of angle rel for, for your image that's being cast to your eye. So you can see the difference between, you know, two, four, six, eight minutes of angle looking down sight. And mathematically, this is like equivalent to how light falls onto an image sensor. So why can't I take the Raspberry Pi HQ camera, which is pretty cheap, pair it with whatever lens focal length I want to, since it's a C-type lens, I can screw any lens onto this, and then output it, output the live feed with some overlays onto a small, very small display. Why can't I do that? That would give me the freedom to map the angles just like a rifle scope has marked out, and in the background, if I'm not using all the processing power, in the background, run the ballistics calculations at the same time. This worked really well. <laughs> So now, now comes some of the build-up challenges. How many buttons do I want up on this? And how do I get, how do I look at a screen in a way that's almost analogous to looking down a rifle scope where, where the image is nearly collimated uh, to my eyes. So it feels like I'm focusing my eyes at infinity. How do I do that with a small screen? I'll be honest, the, the field of engineering I struggle with the most is mechanical design. Look at this piece of shit. Look at it. It's not very ergonomic. Everything's 3D printed, so it is a little bit wobbly. Um, Size-wise, though, trying to get this as compact as possible, it does compare to a spotter scope or even a rifle scope. So check this cool shit out. I know my prototype's a piece of crap, but mounted on the side, this thing looks badass as hell. And with all the features built into it, I'll be plinking different distances without a hesitation, just lazing and shooting and lazing and shooting and lazing and shooting. Reach all the buttons, all the dials and shit. <sighs> and I got the laser rangefinder on the side. It's a lot of fun, adds weight. 
looks cool as hell and then if somebody really bothering you you can attach the uh, thermal printer and print out somebody else's shot table for them tell them to piss off as you're shooting pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. I know this is a bolt action but you know you get it so I think this is a really good time to segue into showing off some of the features that I've already integrated into the uh, software and talk about where there's room for expansion, where things fall a little bit short, and what could be improved. All right, let's take a look at the menu features. So if I hit the menu button, which I have mapped to button number two, you can do whatever you want. Um, I can go in and I can adjust the caliber of the bullet that I'm shooting. I shoot a 308, so I kept, kept mine there. Um, you can change your weight uh, in grains. Um, I've been shooting at 168 and it's pretty comfortable. Um, I know long range shooters like to be really consistent with what they shoot. Uh, I can change the G model, which is right below that, to, from a G7 or to a G1. Those are two, the two most commonly used G models for these ballistics uh, computations. Here's my ballistic coefficient. Uh, you can change your zero distance just below that with uh, whatever distance you want to zero your scope to or can scope zero it to. Um, below that even is the muzzle velocity that you that you estimate or you can measure it with a chrono. Uh, that'd be a cool feature to put in the, the future, put some Hall effect sensors uh, so you can measure uh, muzzle velocity. And then here at the bottom I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in a wind effect, uh, wind speed. Let's say like a 10 mile an hour wind, and let's make um, let's make the angle that it's coming in. Let's make it purely east, so 90 degrees heading uh, is what that equates to. We'll see what that does to our shot solution um, for short distances. I wouldn't expect this to affect very much, which it doesn't. Let's see what that uh, wind parameter, now that you can see it in the top right, wind 10 mile an hour, uh, degree 90 degrees. We are pointed at 10 degrees heading. Uh, so let's see what this does if we change our target distance, crank it up to a thousand yards and see that the MOA solution at the bottom right is telling us, okay, now it's like seven uh, minutes of angle off. So we need to compensate. So if I do the snap to feature, it'll snap right to it. Uh, the left and right adjust says seven now, and the elevation's still uh, plugged in. I wanted to show this feature too. Um, as I hold this handheld, I should have put this on a tripod, but this orange bar that's coming off of the impact zone is actually a lead time computation. So at 300 yards, the time of flight in the top left says we're at about a third of a second. Um, and so reading the gyroscope and multiplying that by the time of flight, uh, you can get an estimate of how much you need to lead your target by uh, angularly to actually hit it if it was moving at a, you know, at a constant rate. This is a fun feature here. If I keep pointing this up, what I coded in was a separate menu screen for if you're pointed past a certain angle, now you go into what I call lobster mode. It's a complete 2D plot uh, to show you height versus trajectory distance, and this is um, <laughs> mostly supposed to be a joke. Please don't actually fire your gun pointed, you know, 82 degrees in the air. But if, if I did, I could expect to hit about 10,000 10, feet on height with my bolt before it came back down and a general estimate of how far I would land away. So here's page two of the settings. Obviously, you should know if you're a shooter how important the altitude, pressure, temperature, relative humidity are for calculations. Uh, you can see at the bottom too, I have latitude and longitude um, plugged in. Just as a placeholder, I don't have Coriolis or spin drift or aerodynamic jump coded in just yet to the aerodynamic model. Um, that's something I'll improve in the future. Um, but for now, you can use these settings. I quickly want to show you guys the lasing feature for the laser range finder. So that trash can's 35 yards, that one's 44 yards. Uh, this house is about 80 yards away. Um, I can I can see that, that this uh, building at the park is about 140 yards away from where I'm standing. Um, and I can digitally punch in really well. Um, really quick, here's a camera feed with the infrared filter actually taken out of the camera or moved to the side with the RG cam. Uh, if you saw that really quick pulse of light, that's actually the laser rangefinder. So this is a good way to line up your laser with your line of sight of your scope. Going back into the settings here, um, if you were to put a different focal length total on the front of the sensor, you can go into this calibration uh, menu here where 
you can tweak the uh, the equivalent focal length in the top left. Uh, you can see I'm punching in bigger and smaller, and the calculations for where the hash marks lie um, are based on that initial focal length lens. So what, what is it doing? It's mapping the focal length to the uh, image sensor for the IMX 477, and then a transform again to the 240 by 240 screen that we're using to determine where these hash marks need to be to show what uh, minute of angle offset from center. Everything lies, um, and if you wanted to, you could put a one inch by one inch grid, target out at 100 yards, point this at it on a tripod or something, and just by eye tweak it until the lines fit perfectly with what you expect. Don't forget, 100 yards at 100 yards, one MOA is about 1.047 inches. So that's kind of your, your uh, so that's your starting point. Oh my god. So where do we go from here? I'll be honest, I was going to take a little break on this project. I've been working on it all year and I'm a little fatigued. Uh, I've invested a lot of money to find out what pieces don't work well and what do work well. Uh, so I can compile just a like a parts guide for people to buy and stuff. It's coming out to about 200 bucks for all the electronics, which is really cool. So I was thinking if I threw that and a start from scratch guide, uh, all the software and its future updates all together as a bundle for like 50 bucks on Gumroad, that wouldn't be that um, unreasonable. But before I do that, I wanted to gauge the communities and see, hey, if people are people interested, would they actually build one of these up? And is that $50 price point too unreasonable? <laughs> Give me the fucking money! So uh, the best way I can do that is by gauging the comments section here. So, so if you found it interesting, send this video to a buddy who you think would build one up and see what they would think. Um, if they think it's really cool, yeah, I'll start taking the next steps if I get enough engagement on this video. So let me know. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you found it cool. And tell your mother I said hello.